At Revolution 2024, Swerve Strickland found himself in a grueling three-way match for the All Elite Wrestling World Championship, facing off against the formidable champion Samoa Joe and Hangman Page, his hated rival. While he didn't clinch the title, it marked a significant milestone in his career. Just two years prior, at Revolution 2022, Swerve had his major debut with AEW, and in just two years, he transformed formed AEW into whose house? Swerve's house. This is Sports Key to Wrestling. I'm Kevin Kellum. Let us know what you think of Swerve Strickland in the comments below. Long before fighting for the AEW world title on pay-per-view, Swerve was wrestling on the independent circuit. He showcased his talents in the mid-2010s as Combat Zone Wrestling, and AAW Pro came to prominence. He got TV reps on the other prominent wrestling promotions, Lucha Underground and Major League Wrestling. But the big leagues were still the big leagues, and Swerve eventually attracted the attention of WWE and transitioned to NXT in 2019 under the name Isaiah Swerve Scott, marking a significant step forward in his professional wrestling career. Initially, he entered the Cruiserweight division and even participated in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament. However, he struggled to connect with the audience on a grand scale. He stood out for his slick in-ring delivery. The reps were there from his years in the indies. He had brooding charisma, but it didn't feel like it was being showcased on the black and yellow brand. It wasn't until 2021 that he underwent a transformation, embracing a more ruthless, cunning, and gritty demeanor, turning into a villain that WWE NXT needed. WWE recognized what they had, and not long after, he achieved a significant milestone by defeating Bronson Reed for the WWE NXT North American Championship. He also formed a faction known as Hit Row, driven by the modern vibes of hip-hop music with such players as Top Dollar, Ashanti, V. Adonis, and B-Fab, they solidified their presence on the NXT brand. Swerve brought a mix of swagger, streetwise attitude, and an in-ring ability that few had at that moment. He truly had something special and unique. His character was deeply rooted in the culture, and he was representing it, often incorporating rap lyrics and references into his own promos and entrances. Swerve and Hit Row were promoted to SmackDown. They were going to be the next big group that fans got into, right? However, their short-lived stint was pretty sad in retrospect. After only a few appearances on television and one televised match that we could find, Scott was released from WWE on November 18th, 2021. This was a really harsh, abrupt turn of events. Surprising, especially considering the rise in popularity of Swerve and Hit Row at the time. It felt like a fresh move. Many fans perceived his departure from WWE as unjust, feeling that he was deprived of a real opportunity to thrive on the biggest stage of WWE. Fortunately, there was a really well-financed and prominent alternative to WWE that was gaining some traction, All Elite Wrestling. And at Revolution on March 6th, 2022, he made his entrance as Swerve Strickland, the name he had before he made to WWE, and signed his contract live on TV. Joining AEW felt like the perfect decision for Swerve. A swerve, if you will, as he seemingly fit into the company's maybe more risque attitude. Recognizing his potential, AEW president Tony Khan strategically paired him with Keith Lee, another former WWE standout who had arrived around the same time and they were generating significant buzz. The duo dubbed Swerve in Our Glory previously had experience together on the independent circuit. Their chemistry was evident as they embarked on a series of tag team matches and eventually at Dynamite Fighter Fest Night 1 on July 13th, Swerve and Our Glory won the triple threat match against the Young Bucks in Team Taz, clinching the AEW World Tag Team Championships. 
In just six months with AEW, Swerve became a champion, showcasing the upstart promotion's ambitious plans for both him and Keith Lee. Following this, they went on to defend the title successfully against teams such as the Lucha Brothers and the Gun Club. As the quickly crowned face of the tag team division in AEW, Swerve and his partner Keith Lee initially basked in the adoration, basked in their glory, yes. However, it became apparent that Swerve's true strengths laid in his ability to portray a villainous character. Keith Lee certainly was not a villain. Despite this, they retained their titles, but Swerve was seething with frustration, determined to embrace that dark side of his persona. Swerve started resorting to underhanded tactics in their matches, signaling a transition to a full-fledged bad guy type behavior. However, his tag team partner, Keith Lee, remained steadfast in his resistance to Swerve's nefarious methods. Yeah, they're one of those how-can-they-coexist tag teams. This conflict of characters set the stage for an inevitable fallout between the two. But how you would get there was how you could keep things interesting. But before their partnership reached its breaking point, Swerve and Keith suffered a significant setback, losing those tag team titles to the acclaimed at Dynamite Grand Slam in front of a massive crowd. Their attempts to reclaim the titles from the acclaimed were thwarted once more at the Full Gear pay-per-view, and they fell short in that rematch. The acclaimed were all about being the IT team, and this tag team of two very different characters simply had that tension reach its boiling point in the rematch, when Keith refused to utilize a pair of metal pliers as a weapon, Swerve's frustration boiled over, leading him to slap his partner. And I don't think you should slap Keith Lee. This act of betrayal prompted Keith to walk out on the match, leaving Swerve to fend for himself in the ring, and ultimately leading to their defeat, or maybe his just defeat. The aftermath of this turbulent split saw Swerve ignite a heated feud with his former ally Keith Lee, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his career. Establishing himself with a fresh faction known as the Mogul Embassy, Swerve sought to assert his dominance in AEW. Once again, it showed that Swerve had the ability to lead a group of performers on camera. This is also around the time that Swerve introduced his Swerve Stomp, a finishing move onto cinder blocks, incapacitating Lee and sidelining him with an injury indefinitely. Undeterred, Swerve embarked on a relentless winning streak as 2023 dawned. He showcased his prowess by winning matches against the likes of Wheeler Yuta, Brian Pillman Jr., but revenge was due to come at the very large hands of Lee, who eventually came back to AEW and wanted to get that revenge as soon as possible. During this period, AEW introduced Prince Nana into the fold, aligning him with Swerve as a key member of the Mogul Embassy, a strategic move that proved highly effective for Swerve as Nana's innate charisma significantly elevated Swerve's overall act. With the wild-eyed Nana by his side, Swerve's entrance to the ring became a spectacle unto itself, captivating audiences as he vibed the song, strutting and dancing, and then getting in the ring to do his thing. Already a hit, Swerve's theme song took on a whole new dimension as Nana joined him dancing their way down to someone else's possible destruction. The synergy of Swerve's in-ring abilities and truly leaping off the screen personality with Nana's magnetic presence created an infectious energy that resonated with fans further solidifying Swerve's status as a dynamic force to be reckoned with in AEW. Following this, Swerve then began hunting for the AEW International Championship, but was unsuccessful in winning it from the smooth, hands-in-his-pockets Orange Cassidy. On a similar case, his encounter with New Japan Pro Wrestling legend Hiroshi Tanahashi ended without victory. Yeah, he wasn't going to be AEW's ace in this case. Swerve now needed to target someone with gold. And that was the AEW TNT champion at the time, Darby Allin, who at his side had the icon Sting. Swerve achieved a significant win defeating Darby on an episode of Dynamite in July. Swerve, always the predator, attacked the 18-year-old Nick Wayne 
a wrestling brother of Darby Allen, which meant you were messing with his family and a score had to be settled and Sting was coming along for the ride. The build to this tag team clash at the upcoming massive stadium event for AEW All In in London would be the most high profile match of Swerve's career to date in front of one of the largest non-WWE wrestling audiences in decades. Yet for Swerve, the road was bumpy to London. And it wasn't exactly his fault, rather a sudden issue with his tag team partner, A.R. Fox. Fox was riding with the Mogul Embassy and Swerve heading into All In. He was even attacked by Sting and Allen in his own gym, but was abruptly removed suddenly from the Mogul Embassy the week of the big pay-per-view and had to be replaced by fellow AEW heel Christian Cage. However, the partnership with Cage in a wild, hardcore coffin match against Sting and Darby resulted in defeat at that gigantic show, with Swerve inadvertently costing his team the victory. It was one of the better matches on the stadium spectacle, and you don't have to win a match sometimes to have that success in the long run. Swerve's momentum once again began to pick up when AEW set him to face Hangman Adam Page, another rising star and a former AEW world champion. On the September 6, 2023 episode of Dynamite, Swerve made a bold entrance, confronting the former AEW world champion Page with a fiery determination Strickland berated Page, asserting that given equal opportunities, he would have been the first black AEW world champion. Adding fuel to the fire, his mogul embassy comrade Brian Cage launched a relentless attack on Hangman. Fast forward to September 27th edition of Dynamite, where Strickland and Page squared off in the ring for a contract signing ahead of their anticipated match at the Wrestle Dream pay-per-view. Verbal jabs turned into physical insults, and it really broke down, culminating in Page stabbing Strickland in the hand with a pen. Swerve and Hangman had a phenomenal match on the October 1st Wrestle Dream event in Strickland's home state of Washington. With the aid of the Mogul Embassy, Strickland defeated Page. But for Swerve, it was a mere victory that would not be enough. He wanted to break the cowboy spirit. So what did he do in the follow-up? He invaded Hangman's home and a Accompanied by Prince Nana, they callously tossed a Mogul Embassy shirt into his child's crib, blaming him for his father's actions. Well, I hope they got a baby size outfit for the baby. What was already a personal vendetta was now fueled with gasoline. Hangman demanded retribution, leading to another showdown at full gear, this time in a gnarly, mean, very violent Texas death match. The brutal encounter pushed both men to their limits, with bloodshed that we have not seen on American televised professional wrestling in some time. The intensity reached unprecedented levels. Hangman stapled one of his child's pictures into Swerve's cheek and then drank his blood and spit it up in the air. But that wild nature wasn't going to stop Swerve. He had the experience in these hardcore violent scenarios previously in his career, but this may have been the most violent match of his career or one that was ever presented in AEW so far. Wrestling Observer's Brian Alvarez called the match the new most violent match in Major League Professional Wrestling in this country. For what it was, it was a masterpiece. Strickland won the match, solidifying his status as a ruthless, gritty, gnarly main event star in the waiting for AEW. The match garnered critical acclaim, earning a 5-star rating from Dave Meltzer. Seeking to take his career to that next level, Swerve made an important decision to enter the prestigious 12-man AEW Continental Tournament. Competing in the Gold League, he showcased his prowess by defeating all of his opponents except for John Moxley during the group stage, securing his spot in the semifinals. I was present for one of these matches, fresh off full gear. And even all of the evil things that Swerve had done on the road to that match with Hangman, he was rolling into this tournament with a lot of fan sentiment. 
However, despite his impressive run, Swerve's journey in the tournament came to an end in the semifinals in a hard-fought triple threat match against Moxley. Though falling short of the victory, Swerve's performance demonstrated his resilience and determination to thrive at the highest levels of competition in All Elite. He continued to prove his worth as a wrestler and a character that even the most casual fan could sink their teeth into. This is when AEW decided to bring a ghost from Swerve's past back. Keith Lee, who had been patiently waiting for a chance to confront his former friend and tag team partner for nearly a year. They were slated to face each other at AEW's World End pay-per-view. But yet another setback occurred to keep this big showdown between Swerve and Lee from happening when Lee was deemed medically unfit to compete. They simply could not get back to that revenge showdown. In Lee's absence, he was replaced by his tag team partner, the natural Dustin Rhodes. Despite the change in opponent, Strickland emerged victorious, securing the win in a match after assaulting Rhodes with a cinder block before the match. Yet he was still cheered. Yeah, it's weird. Sometimes they is not what you expect. It definitely felt like a drop down from the previous pay-per-view performance at Full Gear, which was a hard act to follow. As we record this, we're yet to witness that explosive showdown between the two former sides of Swerve and our glory. When will we swerve in the glory of their collision? Which is undoubtedly disappointing, but hopefully at some point AEW will grant them the opportunity to settle the score once more in the ring sooner than later. Shortly after Swerve directed his focus towards a newly crowned AEW World Champion, the very respected and very feared Samoa Joe. Given Swerve's impressive track record and the caliber of opponents he had already overcome and tangled with, it seemed only natural to position him in a title feud. However, another contender emerged in the form of Hangman Adam Page, who obviously wanted to get back in the world title picture and obviously has very personal issues with Swerve. On the February 7th, 2024 episode of AEW Dynamite, Strickland squared off against Page once more and the winner would earn an opportunity to challenge Samoa Joe for the AEW world title at the upcoming Revolution pay-per-view. However, the intense battle went to a draw at a 30-minute time limit on television, a very rare presentation. Because of this, both competitors were deemed number one contenders, leading to Joe defending the title against both in a three-way situation. During this period, Swerve experienced a remarkable shift in fan support, with the audience rallying behind him wherever he went. Yeah, it didn't matter who he smashed with a cinder block or what he said about someone's child, they just wanted to, you know, go with the Swerve. The surge in popularity was a source of frustration for Hangman who couldn't comprehend this sudden adoration for the guy who insulted his family and threw a t-shirt in his kid's bed. In response, Hangman began to embrace a darker, more sinister, more callous persona, effectively turning heel, sort of. The dynamic between Swerve and Hangman evolved into one of compelling hatred between one another, and is maybe one of the most character-driven stories in all of All Elite. As the saga of mutual, despicable feelings between Swerve and Hangman unfolded further, the reigning AEW World Champion Joe observed from a distance with a sneer, preparing to defend his title in a three-way match at Revolution. Two years after Swerve's debut in AEW, he found himself on the cusp of capturing the ultimate prize, the AEW World title. The atmosphere at Revolution was electric, and as Swerve left no stone unturned in his quest for championship glory, Hangman resorted to any means necessary to prevent Swerve from claiming victory. In this chaos, Hangman even resorted to attacking two referees during the match in a pretty desperate attempt to keep Swerve from his aspirations. Despite Swerve's continued efforts, it was Hangman who ultimately won his goals of ensuring that Swerve's dream remained unfulfilled as he tapped out to Samoa Joe. That's right, Hangman won by tapping out. The level of animosity displayed by Hangman in denying Swerve his moment of glory was nothing short of astounding, solidifying their rivalry at a new level of unparalleled hatred. In the follow-up episode on Dynamite, Swerve took center stage 
humbly expressing his remorse, falling short of winning the championship. This marked a definitive shift in Swerve's persona as he embraced the idea of being a full-fledged fan-favorite babyface. Despite the setback, Swerve remained resolute in his determination to achieve his ultimate goal of becoming AEW World Champion. With an impressive body of work that has already been established in AEW and beyond, it's only a matter of time before Swerve realizes his dream and ascends to the pinnacle of the promotion as its rightful champion. His aura exudes a star quality, evident in how he enhances everyone he encounters in the ring and out. While Keith Lee's AEW journey may have been underwhelming due to his circumstances, his tag team tenure with Swerve was phenomenal, and there's more there between those two. Swerve's feud with Hangman breathed new life into Page's career, gives new direction for him, and makes him pivotal in the sense of being an emotional player in AEW, not just one who chases after a championship, but rather has passion while doing it. A wrestler who elevates others should be the backbone of any company, and Swerve is that type of guy.